let me begin by thanking um, Fed, Pierre, and the team at, uh, at UNWIDA for this opportunity and, uh, to come and share our work with a wider group, but at the same time for excellent organization of a big, big function. Pierre was talking about it similar to preparing a wedding or something like that. <laughs> and if, 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 if people have taken part in preparation of a wedding, you know how stressful that it is. And I can imagine how it has been uh, for the last couple of you know, months to prepare this particular big function. So thank you very much, uh, UN Wider, for inviting us. Um, we're working, I'm from Zambia, as introduced earlier on, and we work, I'm, I'm from the Ministry of Finance. Um, with me uh, is other three guys. Uh, one who is here, uh, there's look at the back over there, seated. Uh, he wasn't here in June. Uh, we, I was with Obi, but uh, Luca is able to join us. Uh, so we are very grateful that you could invite us. Mm. We're looking at financing the Zambia social cash transfer scale up, um, the tax benefit uh, micro simulation analysis, of course, based on um, uh, micro ZAMOD, uh, which has been developed and I'll come to it uh, with support from UN WIDA, SASPRI, and, uh, and, and in cooperation with, uh, with, with ZIPA, the, the local institution, uh, research think tank in Zambia, which is the Zambia Institute for Policy and Research. Um, uh, what is our motivation behind um, um, this particular research? First and foremost, um, for the last couple of years, up until about 2015, from around, I would probably go beyond uh, 2006 and probably put it at 2005, Zambia uh, experienced reasonably high levels of uh, economic growth, averaging about 6.4% for last for 10 years up to 2015 before uh, growth uh, plummeted to about 2.9% and they're about lower. Uh, due, obviously, uh, to unfavorable base metal prices on the old market. Uh, uh, but despite this uh, uh, average good growth, poverty has stagnantly remained uh, very high. Uh, it only marginally declined, while inequality, in fact, increased. And this has been seen uh, by a, a Living Conditions Monetary Survey that has been conducted, that are usually conducted by the Central Statistical Office of Zambia. The 2015 survey shows that 54.4% uh, of the Zambian population, of about 16 million people, was living below the national poverty line, with 76.6, .6, which is up just roughly 77%, in rural areas and in urban areas, about 23.4%. The survey also shows that. Um, uh, extreme poverty was still stagnantly high at 41%. They are about with 60.8% in rural areas and 12.8% in urban areas. The 2011 Living Condition Monitoring Survey was about 50, 59, they are about. So the reduction in poverty was quite low. Uh, as measured by the income coefficient, the income inequality was, was also very high at not 0.69 uh, and not 0 0.60 for rural areas and not 0.61 for urban areas. And the survey report says that the poor still remain vulnerable facing challenges including food insecurity, inadequate access to basic services such as education, uh, self drinking water and health care. And therefore this poses a challenge what can be done uh, uh, in, a, in a developing country where growth is high and you would want to reduce poverty levels. This brings in the component of social protection interventions and this is why countries, most nations and policymakers alike, I think have, have moved away from just focusing on economic growth or growing the economy alone, but also bringing in the component social protection interventions that remain key. And the Zambian government, I'll come to it later on, has recognized this point in the sense that the seventh national development plan um, significantly points to social protection as well as um, the other reform, reforms that have been undertaken as having a very strong component on social protection. Uh, this is, and in Zambia, one such protect, uh, social protection intervention that remain key is a social cash transfer or a direct transfer, uh, as, as it were, as this has been seen to reduce poverty, hunger, income inequality, and promote inclusive growth. Um, social protection is not very new to Zambia as it has been implemented since 2003. But before then, 
Um, social uh, protection still existed in Zambia as it was done through in-kind support, such as food aid, clothes, and so on and so forth. And the thinking then was that by, by the policymakers and implementers alike was that uh, uh, they knew much more than what the poor needed most. But this uh, resulted in some problems as um, logistically it was quite very expensive uh, in terms of storage and also transportation, but there was also pilferage as this food aid never reached the intended target. Um, but at the same time, for beneficiaries, some beneficiaries also sold some of these um, uh, handouts that were given to them. And therefore, a government decided to establish or to introduce a direct transfer as a, as a main uh, uh, social uh, intervention uh, program. And, and, and currently, it, it, it definitely it, it consists of a bi-monthly grants to households, and it looks at households. And for households without people with disabilities, it's about $9, which is 90 Zambian kwacha. And for households with um, disabilities, or a disability person, it's about $18 a month. And the idea is that uh, this should reduce extreme poverty and the intergeneration transfer of poverty. But as we saw earlier on in the statistics that I presented, uh, it was introduced in 20, 2003, and uh, the Living Conditions Monitoring Survey that was conducted in 2015, <laughs> at that particular time, still indicated, I uh, was seen that um, poverty still remained very high. And therefore, this poses a question of whether the program in its current form is sufficiently enough to, to have an impact on poverty and inequality. And this is what has motivated us to, to essentially propose a number of social cash transfer reforms, which I'll come to later on. Uh, at the moment, the program targets vulnerable but not viable households, and this includes persons with severe disabilities. Uh, the elderly in Zambia, the elderly are defined as 65 and above because the retirement age is 65 years of age. Of those that are chronically ill on palliative care, and also for female-headed households with three children and above, uh, who are between the ages of 19 to 64 years. After 65 years, then they fall into the the elderly group, and then of, of course the child-headed households. The other two criteria that are added to this, the first one is about is um, is um, is essentially the residence test that you should be living in a particular area for about six months or more. Um, otherwise, then you are not, you cannot um, uh, participate in the program. The last one is wealth uh, estimation, which is based on some threshold that you should have this level of, you should have, you should have a lower level of income to about this threshold for you to participate. Um, from literature, the area versions of the program, which were uh, done in selected districts, literature. Uh, particularly those done by Hand and, and the team, uh, um, when they did an evaluation, an impact evaluation on selected districts, about three districts or so, uh, they discovered or they found that social cash transfer indeed in those areas was, was had an impact on poverty. Uh, and those households also increased their productivity levels by increasing uh, in livestock that they owned, also increasing land that was operated. So there is evidence from um, uh, current literature that social cash transfer can and does have an impact on poverty. In this study, we attempt to test the realism of the alternative social cash transfer reform options that we are, that were proposed using the micro ZAMOT, which has been developed, as I said, with uh, support from SASIPRI and the UN wider. <coughs> And it is based on the Euro mode um, that is being spearheaded by the University of Essex and colleagues at the uh, European Union um, Commission. Um, and the simulation is based on the 2015 Living Condition Monitoring Survey data set. Uh, I'll leave out the detail of the micro mode because Aspre is here. <laughs> and, and Michael is going to talk about that to improve the quality of data and so on. Uh, we begin our simulations first and foremost by, uh, uh, by 
assessing with the current social cash transfer levels uh, using the micro ZAMOT, uh, and of course the 2015 living condition monitoring survey data. And the results uh, seem to tell us that in its current form, the, the, the social cash transfer model, the Zambian model, would have a very minimal impact on poverty as only it uh, would only reduce poverty by 1.56 percentage points. That would be the head count, poverty head count. And in most cases, the effect would be much larger on female-headed households and those households with older persons, pro probably because the households with older persons are much more vulnerable, but at the same time, because the retirement age is at 65, so they are much more labor constrained and therefore uh, the effect is much higher upon those. The simulation also seems to tell us that, uh, 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 that, that the government would need to spend about 977 million, which is about uh, quacha, um, which is much more than what was estimated or estimated in the 2018 budget of 721 million kwacha. But with these statistics aside, there's still political will on the at government will on the Zambian side because as you can see that cumulatively over a period of time from 2011, uh, there's been an increase in terms of the number of beneficiaries under the social cash transfer from about uh, 30. 32,000 in 2011 to last year, about 530,000, which is a huge increase. And correspondingly, budget reasons also have increased from about 42 million to about five, and then 550 million last year. And in this year's budget, 2018, there's been an allocation of about 700 million kwacha. So there's been um, uh, an increase, not sufficient though, as, as, as uh, particularly when you compare to the regional average, uh, because this is just about 0.7% of the Zambian, uh, the G Zambian GDP, on average much lower than what is being spent by other countries on average in the region of about 1.7%. Um, further, as I stated, uh, uh, government commits to reduce poverty and extreme poverty as stated in the 7th National Development Plan by 20% by 2021 from the initial analysis of the current uh, design of the program, that is not possible um, because you need to reduce by about eight percentage points, which is much higher than what we're getting if we use the current data on the current design. The seventh National Development Plan also commits to increase coverage of social assistance from about 40% to 70% of the poor average value of per capita social assistance benefits as well as a percentage of the poverty line from 6.5% to 20%. Um, further, uh, in the other government documents, that particularly those that are aimed at fiscal consolidation and so on, there is a strong commitment to, uh, to, to, to preserve what is being uh, budgeted for social protection. Therefore, it will be desirable for a program like this to have uh, a huge impact. And this is our suggestions on how alternative social cash transfer reforms, first and foremost, the first four scenarios are aimed at changing the targeting approach by extending coverage. The second is about improving adequacy by increasing the transfer levels. And the first one, include, including the children that are aged between zero and two years, revising eligibility from instead of looking at the household level to include at the individual uh, level, and then of course removing the means test and residence test so as to make the, the, the uh, you, to, inc to increase coverage from selected to universal coverage. Again, the improving adequacy, we, we take consideration of the sizes of the households rather than looking at uh, just individuals if you have a, a handicapped person in the house, or you have one who is on palliative care, and then despite the, the numbers uh, of, of the household, and or indeed just by doubling the amount that, 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 that is given. The simulations uh, on the alternatives seems to suggest that first and foremost, under the status quo, uh, poverty would be reduced very minimally. If we add children aged between zero to two years, the difference, would be slightly huge than what is on using the, under the status quo. And if we shift to individual eligibility, it is slightly lower than if you're adding children to zero to two. 
and universal cover for universal rural areas mostly because at the, at the moment almost every person that is eligible in the rural areas is covered, but if you include urban areas, you see a substantial impact on poverty. And the expenditure that would be needed is just roughly around 1.1.5 billion kwacha, which is less than the regional average. <clears throat> Further, if we increase or change that, uh, the, the, the transfer levels, what we see, particularly when we combine, uh, is that when you combine children between the ages of zero to two and the transfer to account for household size, the impact will be huge. Uh, and it will be 5.08%, which is four, four percentage points that government is targeting. And if you look at, if you, if you include, uh, or you just use an absolute transfer increase, the difference or the impact will be slightly lower uh, than what uh, under the, the transfer to account for outdoor service. So this, on, on inequality, however, the difference doesn't seem to be huge. Inequality seems to, uh, social cash transfer seems not to have much impact on inequality. And there, is, there could be many reasons. Probably uh, it could be that uh, uh, as, it could be that maybe due to deindustrialization or other causes that could have an impact on uh, but, but I think this uh, inequality is something that needs to go beyond social protection, or it did, you know, the like. So our conclusions are that first and foremost, social caste transfer, yes, as an, as, as, um, there's, uh, there's opportunity for it to have a contribution on poverty reduction, but in the absence of the program taking a nationwide uh, approach, the impact will be smaller and it might not uh, be significant to reduce to extreme poverty in line with uh, the government policy unless it is reformed further. And the reforms would take further extension of coverage, increasing transfer levels, and so on and so forth. But this poses a challenge because remember when I, uh, that what would, what would be needed earlier first would be if indeed uh, you look at the amounts needed, uh, first and foremost, the budget would be 2.5 billion uh, from what is 1 billion. So there will be the difference in terms of commitment from government resources will be huge. So how can this be financed? If indeed it has to take to have an impact on poverty, but at the same time um, contribute meaningfully to poverty reduction. So this therefore leads us to, uh, to first and foremost, look at financing options. How can it be financed? First and foremost, we look at the various package of tax reforms uh, which we propose, and we also simulate them on, first on impact on poverty as well, but also on revenue collection as well. Uh, we look at introducing a sin VAT rate of 50% on alcohol and tobacco, because these are products that are consumed, obviously, by those that are a bit better off. Uh, we also look at uh, revision of income tax, particularly the, the higher bracket level, um, and the result tend to <laughs> tell us that, in fact, revenue can be generated, which is sufficient enough, but uh, there would be a bit, obviously, reduction in uh, increase in poverty, extreme poverty headcount. Without tax reform, it's 36.8, but with tax reform, that would be uh, to rise to slightly 36.9%. And, uh, but, this would have an impact on extreme poverty because definitely those tax, uh, proposed taxes are aimed at the income group that is slightly higher than uh, um, the, the rest. Thank you very much.